Assalamu alaikum guys this is Ali Bakir Khan with another episode of Youth Alumni Association uh, today we have Rana Azam with us and she is currently working as head of strategy in Fabit and previously she was working as a product manager at Finja and uh, as for uh, as far as her education is concerned she has done uh, MBA from Lahore School of Economics so first of all thank you so much uh, rana for uh, you know taking time out for this good cause today thank you so much ali for having me it's a pleasure thank you so much so we want to know i mean we've been doing a lot of sessions people are you know getting to know slowly and gradually that career counseling is an important aspect but first we yeah. would like to know more about yourself your career journey and who you are and how did you get to you know head of strategy is something i mean for you at <laughs> least now you know you're at that level but i'm yeah. pretty sure you know there might be a lot of obstacles there might be a lot of hurdles there you know so can you please throw some light on your journey yeah. and explain course, the youth of, of the entire world about who you are <laughs> go ahead definitely so uh, i've done my bachelor's degree in accounting and finance from lahore school of economics back in 2015 okay. and while i was doing it i realized that oh this is not for me this is not this does not match my personality or how i am because i found the subjects to be too dry for me and i was like i don't see myself becoming an accountant or joining um, you know this field particularly so what do i need to do to change it Yeah. but uh, by the time i realized it i was entering my third year and it was pretty late for me to start over again so just to um, you know make things possible for me in other direction also i did my masters in marketing okay. uh, from lahore school of economics but again uh, there was nobody that i could actually ask or you know there was no guidance for this and i was just following whatever i was feeling is right or need of the time or you know like happening around me Yeah. um but i related myself with marketing degree at uh, a higher level and uh, saw my interest over there so i just shifted for my masters to the marketing side okay having said that i actually wanted to become an engineer and never wanted to join a business school okay. uh because i come from a family where uh i actually take pride in it but I don't set it as a standard but I have a lot of people like my cousins and my friends a lot of them are engineers like 90% of them are yeah. engineers from different fields all right and kudos to them they've made their names in their certain fields and everything but you know like growing up that was the only thing that I was repeatedly seeing and I thought that oh there are no other options in the world engineering or doctor medical or you know like these two fields are if you join these fields you're honorable person in the society if you don't then you know you're just lost that's correct uh, so initially i also wanted to be an engineer and my parents also wanted me uh, wanted me to become an engineer my grandparents wanted me to become an engineer so it was just in built in my head that how i started associating every step with engineering and um, i couldn't get into engineering for uh, multiple reasons at that time uh but as i found out that i can't get into the in the, uh, into the university of my choice i was shattered to my core i was like mm. shit now i am just a failure in life and what and year I was that exactly i mean what that was 2011 2011 actually 2010 2010 2010 uh okay. 2011 i started my degree 2010 was when we were giving uh these uh, ecats and all these entry tests yeah uh so i was shattered and like my family was just um, you know they couldn't take it that how did this happen like you know um engineering was something meant for i think the family and what just happened um and you know because of that feeling and because of um negativity around me in a, in, a, in the sense that my cousins couldn't take it my parents couldn't take it and and my parents have been very flexible i've never had a pressure but it was there also you know they developed a wish over time that oh our daughter should also become an engineer you know mm. um so i just found myself to be very lost at that time i could i didn't know who to turn to right who to ask for like yep. who should i consult that what what do i do now I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about other fields. What do I do now? Mm. IT was booming. Still, there was no interest in IT side. Not even like software engineering. Yeah, back in like, 2011, uh, IT was not exactly. uh, you know where IT is right now. I I totally exactly. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, like I found myself to be completely lost. Those five six months were completely like 
depressing and I was just completely lost. And then I just, um, you know, took this admission in Lahore School of Economics, found out that admissions are open. So I just joined, you know, blindly. And during those days, BB, I, I still remember because I'm from that particular, you know, same era, you could say, yeah. like 2013, 2011. Yeah. LSE was on top <laughs> these days. I mean, on top. Uh, yes. BB, especially. And I mean, if you're getting admission exactly. in business studies, you're just going there and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even then, that was not, you know, something that was celebrated in my circle because, you know, engineer. In, you know i had to be engineer yeah uh but i joined lahore school of economics and my cousins were like hmm, business studies but what will you do and mind you i come from a business background my father yeah. is a businessman okay. um he has a production unit re- related to you know uh bedding and uh, accessories and clothes and okay, um, one one question robotics. that i want to add on i mean first you can just go ahead but you can think uh, you know yeah. answer that later on as well because you come from a business industry so did it ever occur to you guys for going towards any entrepreneurial venture yourself because for a businessman yeah. and in a business life cycle if there is no innovation your business might just fall absolutely. down so yeah, you can yeah, answer yeah, that absolutely. later on but first i mean just tell us I about so how yeah go ahead yeah because at that time it was just engineering I couldn't shift my mind towards, you know, entrepreneurial thing. And at that time, we weren't uh, encouraged for these things either. Nowadays, I'm so happy that our younger generation or, the, you know, like people around us now have this mindset, regardless of the background, regardless of whatever, they have this mindset of hustle of doing two, three things at the same Side time, hustle, yeah. you know, good or bad, that is a different debate. But, you know, they still have a mindset towards trying new things, experimenting, taking bigger risks. Yeah. It wasn't it. All of these things never existed at that time. We were we were told that you know you have to study for these years and then you have to think about something else. So like obviously, however, younger parents you have, there is a certain degree of uh, uh, this um, generation gap. Yeah. Right. So there is. Think, I mean, uh, I still remember. I, I was having right. a word with my father, and uh, uh, he told me that they used to write down letters, fill applications, and you know. It used to take time for them to reply back. And then they yeah. were waiting for those replies. And it was a long process. Yeah. Now we just have a social <laughs> yeah, media. And, <laughs> no, we, we don't even have five actually. minutes to actually go ahead and fill those forms. We are, we're so easy as a nation. We, we want things, uh, All real things time. so easy that even on LinkedIn, if you're applying, you just want to be, uh, you know, apply now. And that's it. Absolutely. Don't even want to go and fill in those minor details and your job summary and yeah. stuff. And people are like, yeah. okay, I think if I just go for that, they're not going to reply me back and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you True. know, Oof, this is what's happening true. as a nation. Anyways, yes, you can go ahead and carry so, on. So, uh, I started my bachelor's in um, business studies. And uh, believe me, I was looked down upon that. Oh, business studies, <laughs> you know. But again, you know, the, the feeling that I still go back to and I wouldn't want my children to have. Now, now I have a ninth month. Uh, old son also mashallah Mashallah. I would never want him to go through this like I would never want my children to feel lost when it comes to career or studies uh, because I've been through that and uh, while I was doing my bachelor's again I found myself lost you know just jumping into something because I didn't want to take a gap year really and not knowing what to do I jumped into accounting and finance and then later realized that oh it's not for me um Mm. you know maybe my heart is somewhere else and then I did my master's in uh, marketing and related to it found it interesting and stuff um having said that I did my master's and believe you um Finja was the first opportunity I got um right next to it I got another opportunity uh from Unilever at that time but my again there was nobody I could speak to really about it that should I get into it should I not Finja was just a startup at that time um, I was one of the founding members also, um, you know, the core team. And we're sitting in like one room doing everything together, not understanding what this entrepreneurial uh, thing is that has taken upon, you know, 2016, all these things started happening, startups started emerging, fintech yeah. started emerging. Um, so at that time, we didn't really know what we were getting into. But again, I just had like engineers in my circle. So there was nobody I could really ask. Mm-hmm. And uh, my father was a business person. He also didn't have anything to co- contribute in this aspect. Particular how aspect. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. How it will flourish and how I should be taking the risk or should not be taking the risk. But um, I am very close to my father. And based on that relationship and bond, he was just like, this is the first opportunity you've gotten after master's degree. I think you should give it a shot. 
these were mm. his words at that time and based on that i gave it a shot That's um nice. unilever on the other hand was much stable much nicer perks everything stuff like that but based on that you know like ethical ground or moral ground or whatever you can call it based on that we just went with pinja and alhamdulillah the journey has been uh, really great because um i joined very in the, in the very very initial stage and i've seen the journey uh, of you know pinja becoming um uh, one of the top fintechs in pakistan securing licenses from state bank and stuff like that so you know like i've worked with uh, cross functional teams i was privileged to work with cross functional teams increase my knowledge um in sales marketing development it design um so that was i think that was actually a luck that happened okay so i, I have a, I, i have a question here let's for example if you weren't a business graduate and you would have become an uh, engineer at that point of time do you think that would have made a difference to your career journey where you're right now or do you think it's better that you got this chance as you know in this absolutely, business field absolutely it's better that i got this chance <laughs> okay no it's no but my point is that why do we guys so if you would have known business studies beforehand let's for example you wouldn't have wasted your time for ecat or all those things right because absolutely. internally yeah. rana is a person let's for example she is made for you know becoming the head of strategy or she's made for doing business she'd made for yeah. you know getting into the industry where she has a vision of creating ideas and you know providing yeah. people good opportunities and stuff right so that's the aspect that i just wanted to add on because your father comes from a business background did he ever try again the same question did he ever try to you know do something different in his business or you know did you ever try to do something different for uh, finja or you know any different strategies you I'm guys came up with i'm coming to this i'm coming yeah. to this go ahead i'm coming perfect to perfect so basically when i joined finja and i started working with these cross functional teams yeah. i found i have that nag in me where i want to explore the business um side also where i want to take some risk where i want to do entrepreneurial things on my own okay as a production it's very b2b sort of a model uh, yeah. i wanted to take it b2c the vision and the dream is still there but just as an experiment i started a brand by the name of nindia there was an ex- exhibition happening in emporium and uh, th- that was a wedding exhibition i had 10 15 days to pull it off and you know randomly just came across uh, this exhibition uh, advertisement on uh, i think facebook or somewhere on the social media i don't remember now but i just contacted them i asked them what what the deal was and they you know explained that we're putting up stalls and it's a wedding exhibition it's for four days and stuff like that and I immediately clicked that why not i experiment myself yeah. test myself through this exhibition and see if i can do this so i like had 15 days i designed everything gave it a brand name spoke to my dad invested a little that i had and four days i pulled it off i made well i at that time i didn't make any losses we were at break even and i made a profit of 20000 but i mean still it's a profit in the end but I mean. it was a profit and this was my first shot before that i never knew and i think if i hadn't uh, if i never have joined finja i would have never experimented taken a risk or known for that matter that i could do something like this also i see um but you know because of certain aspects of life i had to be i had to slow down in that and uh, focus towards i was getting married then you know like i was having a kid and stuff like that so I, my focus shifted towards my job completely because obviously um i believe that you have to be very loyal and honest to whatever you're doing in life also so i wanted to completely pay my uh, you know shift my focus towards my job at that time yeah. and my family okay but the vision and the dream is still there and i will continue it um but you know my father encouraged at that time because he had that mindset of innovation of doing something new of taking a risk and you know but, but he was also clouded back in 2010 or 11 hmm. because he also had all these engineers in um, his circles and he was just like that every other kid that is growing up is becoming an engineer so my daughter has to become you know meets that so why is that part, culture maybe. still prevailing you know why is that thought side Uh, you know thought mindset still in us i mean the stereotype that we guys have that okay he or she should go for mbbs or should go for yeah, engineering yeah. or should go for something like you know chartered accountancy it's or css it's very unfair i'm happy that it's it's a uh, 
this thing is breaking now people are opening their eyes towards you know like other fields also Correct. they're accepting other fields also acceptance is very important maybe they didn't knew about other fields but there were there were no acceptance right mm. now they're accepting pe- their children as chefs as painters as singers as you know like whatever creative field they want to join in and there is so much um in every field to grow this is what they're coming to terms with this is what they're realizing now my yeah. father never <clears throat> i'm sorry my father never pressurized me to to become an engineer but he like silently developed this wish because he was seeing all these engineers in the circle i got you and that this would be a also, good field like, for I'll you i also become a chef also yeah that i also wanted to become an engineer so you know like listening something from your daughter over and over again that oh she wants to do this and the benchmark is already there you also start supporting it right that is uh, correct but yeah but uh, the experiment that i did at that time it was all because my father encouraged me he let me have this risk he let me use my savings he told me about his connection that he has made in the industry helped me throughout so uh, you know but again there was no one i could really um, ask for the should i do this can i take the risk like do i have it in me but at that time chalo my father was there who came from that very um background so he helped me and uh, you know he did help you but again, and i think i think parents should the, uh, the message that i'm going to give to all of those people who are going to view this parents should be there to encourage their children instead of just absolutely. forcing or just put, i mean different. a wish is supposed to be a wish but you're not supposed yeah. to just you know force your child to just go for absolutely. okay i want you to become that in unfortunately i think in today's yeah. era i'm i'm sorry i think that in today's time it's very important that we let our kids make mistakes of their own but we still like you know keep an eye on them yeah. so that they don't face any consequences of bigger failures but it's very important for their growth and their confidence and their um, you know personality build build up that we should let them make mistakes we yeah, should yes. encourage whatever they want to do we should at least listen even if we don't know what they're talking about i have one right. point to add on here you must know junoon the band ali azmat yep. I'm, i'm pretty sure of so <laughs> there was a concert and there was a song that they were singing zamane ke andaaz badle gaye so it yeah. was yeah. you know it was something that i literally felt and then there was a verse <laughs> at that point of time they said that jawano ko peeron ka ustad kar it does not mean that you know you should be mentoring your mentors but again you should give them enough enough chance yeah. to just go ahead because it's their era if they are not going to uh, know what they are supposed to do how would they be able to go ahead and flourish right Absolutely. so Absolutely. this is important and then iqbal uh, once said that you know khudi ko kar buland itna ke har takdeer se pehle khuda bande se khuda bande se khud puchta pata teri raza kya hai so we have such inspiring people we've got such Absolutely. inspiring you know poetry uh, jo ke agar hum padhe to i think we guys can just go ahead and be successful It does not matter hame koi rok nahi sakta yeah. I still remember yeah. when I used to work for Berry University Islamabad people used to come up with amazing ideas trust me Yeah and I was impressed but the only thing they were lacking was lack of funds they did not have enough funds to go ahead True So where do you True. think uh you know we uh, forget about the government I just don't want the blame game again ke okay ji wo yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah, know yeah. about those certain mm. politicians aaj bhi I just mm. saw boy don mein I I've been reading don since my childhood the daily dawn newspaper right so i still have a yeah. habit of it so there are certain columns if you're interested in the political chaos na to aap wo headline hi padhenge and that's it but if you were to go yeah. ahead and you want to explore Absolutely. images you want to explore some different columns you would get to know about different industries so don't just yeah. sit and talk about one thing 24/7 and you know of which there is no result right so mm. you need to come up with that innovative mindset and that's what i have been emphasizing in all of my podcast sessions so you be, yeah. being the head of strategy i want you to just tell me three strategies if you know you are a pm of pakistan for let's for example for a month or two oh god and, <laughs> uh, yeah that's a big post but the reason is you, yeah. you got to think with that mindset right i mean because the the future generation yeah, is going to lead yeah. us towards success yeah. so yeah. what would be uh those three strategies that you think would be minimizing this problem of lack of career counseling and one more thing there are different levels in pakistan there is one tier 1 tier 2 and then there is tier 3 as well so we have those people you need to collaborate all of them together and think about yes. one strategy for, for all so that's a question i think i'll start with the fact that you know everything we should we should 
we are focused towards the uh, foundation, I would say. I will yeah. explain how. What I mean by this is that maybe if I had to strategize it, I would strategize the curriculum that is there um, in our education sector. Yeah. We do uh, read and study about theorems and, you know, like chemicals in chemistry or how physics works or, you know, like 1970s history or whatever. Yeah. But there is no lesson about how to, you know, like... Um, how to actually look after yourself, how to listen to your wishes, how to focus on whatever your mind is telling, right? Yeah. There's no chapter that explains that how to become, no, I wouldn't say successful, but how to at least know that who you are, what you want to become, how you want to take your life, you know? There's no counseling. Nobody speaks to anyone. So I would really want, want our curriculum to have any subject where children, Children are encouraged to speak. Children are encouraged to, you know, like at least share what their interest is, what they're good at, what they want to do in life. You know, if you speak to a child, he would say, I want to become a pilot. I want to become a fashion designer. Fashion I would become, designer, yeah. you know, like people would come up with so different things. And I remember my sister when she was very um, young, she was, I think, six or seven years old. She watched this show and uh, after that, she would say to everyone, and she would carry one matching purse with her dress. Okay. And she would just, you know, tell everyone that I want to become a fashion designer. I want to become a fashion designer. Which was She's her, wish, which was her interest, fashion. right? I mean, again. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, at that time, everyone would say, they would like laugh upon this thing that, oh, such a child, you know, fashion designer, who becomes a fashion designer? Mm, that's, and, you know, uh, as again, she, that's uh, very lame of our society her to ask. Confidence shattered that, oh, this is something I can't do, you know, yeah. like her confidence shattered. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I do. Now that we're speaking about this, this is coming to me. And after so long, I'm, I'm, I'm also speaking about this. But I now I remember that, you know, it was a fault at our end. As and it is, still is. Know, it generation. still is, unfortunately. Yeah. And now the point is that she doesn't, she would never go for shopping either. She would always ask me that, oh, I yeah. need this. Will you, when you go, you get this. Right? She's disassociated herself. Let's do a podcast with her. I so want to go ahead and just make sure that, you know, she... <laughs> takes the fear out so, of you know her. that yeah. is what i want to change that whenever a child is saying something we should if we don't want to encourage that's also fine but yeah. we should at least listen we should at least like you know encourage or acknowledge the fact uh, that they want know, to do this thing that's fine i mean just exactly. acknowledge exactly. that okay yeah. if you want, there is no harm in that i mean fashion is no harm yeah you know? and i don't know for some reason we have started misutilizing social media to an extent I mean, for example, if, we, if we, we want to, uh, you know, if we're watching Hollywood actresses doing something, we're okay with it because it's a norm out yeah. there. Okay, she's from America. Yeah. So if the same person mm. is in Pakistan doing the same thing, you're gonna start yeah. putting it's, it's all. Upon. Yeah, I mean, the, what sort of clothing or whatever and it everything is. Everything trolling would yeah, start. I mean, yeah. why would you do that? Then, for I mean, I don't want to just make this political debate, but again, yeah. these kind of things are not gonna lead us anywhere at all. Uh, I still remember, I mean, my father told me once that he wrote a letter to Ronald Reagan, the president of Pakistan, and he actually did reply back to him as well, that he mm -hmm. was fond of, you know, his writing and the way because he has been a journalist. So that was mm -hmm. quite a good thing. I asked him, what did you write? I mean, because president of America is replying. So what was so special about it? So he at that time wrote about research and development. Then in Pakistan, yeah. there is no culture of research and development. There's absolutely. And yeah, I am yeah, a guy yeah. who wants to pursue a career in research and development. And he actually invited him over. For some reasons, he did not want to go there. But at, I mean, one thing that I liked about him is that he had different goals. I mean, for, for people like us, if we get an American sponsored visa, we are going to go like, okay, let's just go. But they yeah. always used to think about things and evaluate. Like if I'm in Pakistan, what should I do? So we have yeah. very limited goals. What do you think about well, these I'll, aspects? I'll give, what you, is I'll give you one more example. Success for people out there to make a house, to, to marry See, a woman. Very, yeah. mm. This is not success. Have this children? is a normal <laughs> habit. You have to Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. Success is yeah. different. Successful is a person to me who has done something for another person. A charisma yeah. for me, charismatic leader for me is someone who actually, you know, the, through his own capabilities, who drives energy out of 100 uh, people out there, like Nelson Mandela Absolutely. did, like Absolutely. a lot of other politicians, Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. did, right? So do you want to throw some light on this aspect? The thing is that, uh, you know, as you're speaking about this, I'm, uh, I can't 
shake off and think about there's another person very close to me uh, i would give one example that you know uh, that person is a very successful um, military person right okay. has okay. a career in military okay and now he wants to shift but at this age at the age of 30 he's yeah. lost he doesn't know who to speak to where yeah. to go like yeah. you know like so lack of career counseling or lack of um, you know like um, research and development for that matter and lack of uh, um, uh, you know encouragement that there is in our society it shatters me to see that you know at this age with this knowledge with this exposure and everything we're still lost yes right i agree so you you say that success i think success is very subjective and we should never ever uh, associate with these material life goals that you know oh i have a job i have a wife i have two kids i have a house fine i'm successful that's not it you yeah. need to think i think for me successful person is who sleeps well at night yeah. you know no matter wherever he's sleeping i think that's for happiness. me successful person i mean again is, that's that's happiness right i mean happiness is something that's success also that's, that's success yeah because you're internally also, satisfied you you don't exactly. have any worries about you know different yeah. aspects of life so, so that's for me success is that that you know you are you're content with life if i today i'm content with my life i would count myself as a successful person right yeah. because then i would be in a mindset and uh, in a frame where i can uh, actually help people also where i can focus my energy my uh, capabilities towards other people also yeah. right where i can extend my hand to other people also if i'm Not jumbled people. up in my own head and if you know like i am going through my own worries and whatever i can't help the other person out so success for me is not these material things or anything else it's just contentment and satisfaction with your own self hmm. because if you think about other things you'll never find satisfaction but if at least you can think about yourself one thing i think in which you should at least never get complete satisfaction is um you know how you want to be a better person a better version of a your better version self. of your own self Absolutely. try to go for self evaluation I, i guess yeah yes you should keep evaluating yourself you should at least on weekly basis if not daily like you know evaluate yourself your week your days and then think how, where you lack where you want to do better how could you like be a better version of yourself that is very important okay. if you have that I count you a successful person. Okay, Rana, one more question here. So, let's for example, a person is facing obstacles and hurdles and like you mentioned your sister she wanted to become a fashion designer and eventually, you know, she had to face a lot she, of criticism. She joined academia. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying, right? So, her yeah. her whole career journey actually just, you know, went ahead and I think she could not pursue what she actually wanted to, right? So, yeah. wh- what do you think how in in society where people are i mean I, i've been to i've been working for lums for different projects mm-hmm. i've been to lahore grammar school almost all of those and i've been you know giving presentations to little kids out there then right. i've been going to tier 2 institutes then i've been working in berhe university islamabad then i've been mm-hmm. you know into different sales and marketing agencies within like trg keep trucken and i've been working for such companies as well so i come from a portfolio where i've got a lot of experience so i'm speaking on behalf of that so i just want uh, one answer in terms of my heart inside craves for people who are from th- th- those areas who've got immense potential yeah. and who so want to just go ahead and you know be successful and success means a lot to them not just in terms of yeah. monetary value absolutely but I in terms it. of the fact that okay i want to become recognition opportunity opportunity yeah. Yeah. what message would you want to give to those people so they can come up and they can flourish as well not just the tier 1 students i mean one thing that's lacking in them is communication skills obviously because the schools yeah. the kind of schools they go to teachers don't even know what grammar is right so why yeah, how can you yeah, you're right but but mm. what sort of confidence should they have i mean if if i am giving an interview in urdu it does not it should not matter i mean i understand that every Absolutely. level of communication if my job yeah. needs it that's another story right but if yeah. someone is good in social media marketing uh, and he does not have to write down content even if he's going ahead and you know interviewing in urdu don't you think that our hr people along with all those companies out there should also respect the fact that they're there 
and they also deserve an equal chance especially when living in a country like pakistan where people a lot of people know urdu rather than english so what's wrong with that yeah. why don't we now this is talking about change again if we're not yeah. going to change our mindset exactly these gonna... benchmarks are already So I don't what would you? What was the, yeah? What was the me- what One was your message? I would, my message would be that you know, in in this age where we're living, I've seen what I what I've seen is that um, even the remotest of areas have this uh, power of social media. Yeah. Right. Look at all these TikTokers. We have uh, no offense. I have greatest respect for everyone, every talent, but. i've seen like people with no academic background using these platforms good or bad whatever but i my message would be that there's so many talented people out there if you have that platform if you don't have any um you know um you don't have access to nicer institutes or whatever if you have those platforms and you have a following and they do yeah. please use it for the good for for showing or show You know, no, like that's for those talent. people. They're gonna do that. But what about yeah. people in the companies who are sitting there and who are supposed to shortlist? Two things. I was coming people. to that also. I was coming okay, to ahead. that also. That yeah. a there are people who who are very talented. They yeah. do have power of social media. They should know how to use it yeah. because this is the time where social media is like you know everything. You look at these marketing agencies. You look at advertisements. Everything we have shifted from ATL, BTL to digital. that is right correct. we've yeah. shifted towards these platforms so use the social media for your benefits yeah b i would like to uh, like give a message to the companies that you know it's very important that we understand the importance of people and culture right mm. we set our culture i i'm very happy that a few companies i came across they have designated positions of course under the umbrella of hr but they've designated positions for people and culture mm. that you know like in my head i became very happy that maybe now the set benchmarks will actually break and you know there'll be new uh, innovative benchmarks that are much needed in the in this time and era yeah. right now yeah. i've seen uh, companies making policies putting that putting it in writing where they're putting policies that you know you can work from home uh, home our companies are uh, flexible enough that you can work from anywhere we kpi oriented we goal oriented and stuff like that not much companies have shifted their uh, way of doing things but a few have you know our benchmarks should be shifted towards those companies who are actually breaking these barriers and coming up with new things so i would really want to uh, want companies to actually have uh, a look towards the importance of people and culture you know like break these benchmarks where you think that only english is important break the benchmarks where you think that only a person in a suit and tie can work properly break yeah, the benchmark I where mean, you think that only boys be, yeah. can work exactly. in it only right? boys can so, uh, I, i see this is also one more thing yeah. that i see uh, because yeah. i've been working for it companies and a lot of people Same, out yeah. there okay no girls are yeah. not made for it or stuff like that yeah. so exactly break the norms we live in know, 21st I know. century you know the great mindset is that oh it boys they need to sit for longer hours you know yeah. shit can go uh, bad at whatever hour so why can't a girl do that <laughs> yeah you know what is this who who said that a girl can't i, I juggle do. with a million things in a day i have an infant to uh, manage i live with my in laws i have a job to look after i have like so many things i can do but if you you know you're not going to give me an opportunity saying that oh she has an infant now she, her focus is towards the child that's very unfair did you test me did you actually gave me the task you know so these yeah. benchmarks that we need to break i'm not talking about genders here but i'm just saying that you know every benchmark be it language be it yeah. gender be it whatever needs to shift you know I, I and agree. we will be bringing the change i agree right uh, i'm uh, so happy with this yeah. uh, platform that you're running it's absolutely great that you know in this time this is the, this is i think the greatest need see it's weekend uh, today but taking out 30 minutes is not a big deal for me or for not you not at all i but, think and, this, and this out of the these of 30 day. minutes if if let's for example even two or three people out there are trying to get motivation i think yes. your purpose is fulfilled right absolutely so wouldn't have to there's actually... nothing that a person can do there's nothing that a person can do regardless of opportunity lack of opportunities regardless of lack of communication regardless uh, of the gender just believe in yourself and you can achieve whatever you are targeting they say on. that the first step is that you have to say that you can 
that's it that you can uh, that you can and if people like you and me are going to come up with more strategies in future i'm pretty yeah. sure we as a nation would be able to go ahead and prosper so uh, prana thank you so much for your time it was really nice thank talking to you thank you so much ali thank you so much it was it was great <laughs> i feel so much like um, happier i would say i'm so happy that there are people who are actually focusing on these things um, we don't have much uh, light towards this segment so thank you so much for having me i really hope that the session was helpful to other people also and uh, look forward to speaking it to you again thank you so much for that guys uh, who are watching us you can follow us on youth alumni association we have got a facebook page yes we have a lot to do but uh, of course i mean i work as well so does you know every other person who's coming here yeah. so we're not being sponsored or stuff this is just an initiative that i took personally just to help people out so i and and for those people who think that they can add on to it and they can actually help this idea you know flourish ahead they should definitely get in touch with uh, get in touch with us and i think people like rana and other people i'm really thankful uh, you know to them for taking i uh, taking out time on weekends uh, you know especially for the good cause so thank you so much it was really ni nice talking to you and take care of yourself pleasure is all mine thank you so much thank you thank ali you. take care appreciate it bye bye, -bye.